Hey everyone, it's Brian. I wanted to make this video on what I call my portable math library. I call it that because uh, right now I'm at school, I'm in grad school, so these aren't all of my math books that I have. These are just the ones that um, I kind of think are necessary for me to have for the classes I'm currently taking or the books that I need on hand in case I need to reference something. Um, and a while ago I made a video on my entire math book collection. Uh, you can click in the top right if you want to see that video. But this, these are just the books that I have on hand. There's a few new ones here since my last video. And uh, if you're interested in any of these, I'll put as many as I can find in uh, the description. I'll put links there in case you want to check them out. So just starting here, this, this first book, An Introduction to Analysis by James R. Kirkwood. I did a I did a math book review about this one. This is the analysis book that I use in my graduate real analysis class. And uh, it's, a, it's a really good book for, for introduction to analysis. I don't think it necessarily uh, is a graduate textbook in mathematics, although we are using it in my grad class. Certainly this is good for an undergraduate if you're looking to learn real analysis. Um, plenty of examples to do. Um, and it's, it's, a, you know, it's a small book. I like it a lot, um, no complaints there. This book here, this is um, James Munkris' uh, second edition topology book. I think this is like an international edition or something. Uh, as far as I can tell, uh, Munkris is the standard for topology. If you're looking to learn topology, uh, many, many people you will use Munkris books. And I think I got this book for like, I don't know, 10 or 12 dollars on Amazon. Really, really cheap. Really, really nice paperback. Um, it's a little bit tough to read, you know, especially if you're learning topology for the first time. Uh, might be a little bit bit tough, but this is really good. This is probably, probably every topologist out there has a copy of Munkris. Here I have uh, what's called the Everyday, let's see, the Everything Everyday Math Book. Um, it's definitely not a rigorous book. It's it's sort of uh, a nice little thing. My dad actually gave it to me uh, for Christmas one year, and it's got a whole bunch of things, you know, lots of uh, real world math examples and kind of review of like numbers and things, and just lots of interesting things that um, everyday people can do with math, which is great. This book has a whole bunch of examples about things that do come up in real life uh, and. How to use math with it and I did a math book review on this one if you want to look at that video here I have a uh, Schwamm's guide a uh, Schwamm's outline this one's for linear algebra I like this one for linear algebra because linear algebra you really need a lot of examples for learning the techniques learning what's going on and so this is the book that I look at um, if I ever forget a technique or I need to review a technique in linear algebra because you can see here it says 612 fully solved problems. And uh, so I, I like this one. A lot of the times if, if people want a book with a lot of examples, I'll recommend these Schwamm outlines. So um, it's a nice one to have on reference here. This book here is the GRE math subject test. So this book I was using when I was prepping to take the math subject GRE. If you're going to grad school, many times you have to take the GRE. And if you're going to grad school specifically for a subject, like uh, math, for instance, or they have it for uh, probably physics and biology and a few other things, if you're, if you're looking to do graduate study, sometimes the program will require you to take a subject-specific GRE. So this one, it was a really challenging test. It was kind of like taking a final for your entire undergraduate degree. And uh, this book really helped me study. It really kind of uh, condensed everything down for me. I think they have a newer edition and the format of the exam has changed a bit since I took it. But um, it's a really good book. Helps me in a lot of areas because it covers all sorts of things from, from calculus to differential equations, linear algebra, complex analysis, statistics, number theory, a whole bunch of stuff really. This book here, A First Course in Probability, um, by Sheldon Ross. This book uh, is near and dear to my heart. This was my first probability theory course that I ever took, <laughs> aptly named a first course in probability. And uh, this is also a book I used for reference when I was 
studying to take the first actuarial science exam because the first actuary exam is probability. So this book is really nice. It's usually the one that I recommend to people if they want to learn a probability theory for the first time. Uh, it's really nice. It has lots of examples. So I like that book a lot. This book here, um, Numbers, Groups, and Codes. I haven't actually opened this book for a long time. I use this book uh, as an undergraduate when I was taking a discrete mathematics course and we were doing a little bit of number theory, a little bit of introductory proofs, um, a little bit of a tiny bit of abstract algebra. It's kind of like an introductory um, to real world, or I should say a grown up math book. <laughs> when you're first starting to look at proofs and you're starting to look at um, math theory, I don't know, it's got some interesting stuff in it. like. Like, uh, like I said, like the coding stuff is cool. Um, like if you're uh, thinking about looking at um, like cryptography, that sort of thing, uh, the concepts in this book might help you out. This book here, this is kind of an older, uh, it says a first course in applied complex variables. So this would be complex analysis, you know, imaginary numbers. Um, so you think like square root of negative one is I, this book, this book goes into depth of it. It's really kind of like calculus with complex numbers. Uh, it's a little bit dense. This isn't what I recommend people read for the first time if they're going to take complex analysis. Uh, I'll show you that book in a bit. But it's a nice book that uh, an old professor of mine gave me. This book here, Linear Algebra Done Right. This is a famous book by Sheldon Axler. This is the third edition. I have used this book for an undergraduate a uh, course in linear algebra. I have used this course for a, uh, this book for a graduate course in linear algebra. This is probably the textbook that most theoretic linear algebra classes use, and for good reason. It's a very good book. It's all proof based. It's all theoretic, but it's a really really nice book. And I think some people don't like it. I think some people give it a lot of hate. I think it's unjust. <laughs> um, it's a uh, it's it's probably the book if you're going to learn linear about linear algebra from a theoretic perspective starting with you know um, vector spaces and then building up to linear transformations and going from there this book the classical theory of integral equations um, this oh, books falling a bit this book um, is the book that one of my old professors wrote uh, and they actually so the best of my knowledge, they used this at Harvard for a little bit, and he, he inscribed it for me here. Let's see if I can, I guess how you say, to Ryan Hawthorne, a great student with a great future. Best wishes always, Steve Zimian. Uh, so that was really nice of him. And uh, this is a very advanced book. I have not gotten through it. <laughs> I probably need to spend a good bit of time sitting down, but it's a nice memory from my undergrad days, so I keep it with me many places that I go. This book here, uh, it's a neat little book, a terse introduction to Lebesgue integration. You know, um, most people when they think of integration, they're thinking of what would I would call Riemann integration, you know, the classical kind of integral where you perform the integration by partitioning the domain. You know, you split up the domain, the x-axis, the horizontal axis, into rectangles. But Lebesgue integration, um, you partition the range. You split the y-axis up, and you make rectangles starting from the from the uh, y-axis. It's a different different way to do it. And there's some things you can do with that that you can't do with normal Riemann integration. You know, you can't. Uh, Riemann integrate some functions that you can Lebesgue integrate. So that's kind of neat. It's not something everybody sees, definitely not in a typical calculus class. Here's a book that one of my students recommended to me, 1, 2, 3, Infinity. I actually haven't read it yet. I've been meaning to, but um, apparently it, uh, it goes into a bunch of different things, a bunch of different areas in math. Uh, lots of Lots of physical things, you know, some some, I think there's some chemistry in here. I think there's some, uh, some physics in here. It talks about space and time and fourth dimensional things. Kind of a 
kind of a much more not a textbook. It's sort of something you could just sit down and read on a rainy day for pure enjoyment and some insight into some new mathematics. This book here, Men of Mathematics, uh, this is a very dense book. This is like, I don't know, over a thousand, not a thousand pages, but almost, almost 600 pages. I, oh, going over the history of all of the great mathematicians throughout the ages. So if there's been a significant mathematician in the last 2000 years or more, this book probably covers it. Um, and uh, even, even back farther than that, I think. It's a dense book. I think it was written just after, it was early 1900s this was written. Um, it's, it's very thick, <laughs> I keep saying, and I've, I haven't gotten all the way through it just because it's so, so thick, but it's neat. It's cool to have around, a little bit of history. This book, this is a geometry book, a uh, theoretic approach to geometry, so it looks at like uh, Euclidean geometry and then affine geometry, hyperbolic geometry, spherical geometry, projective geometry, all the main topics of geometry. And this is a course, uh, or this is a book I used for two courses I took of geometry in my graduate class. I like this book a lot. It's very, very easy to read. Um, it's very easy to teach yourself with this book, and I really, really like it. These three books here, these aren't actually math books. These are chess books. Chess is one of my big hobbies. Uh, and these books, The Amateur's Mind, uh, Course on End Games and How to Reassess Your Chess, these are all written by Jeremy Silman, who is arguably one of the best chess authors in the world, certainly one of the best selling chess authors in the world, uh, and one of the best chess teachers probably in the world, very renowned. So usually if you wanna get better at chess, if that's your thing, uh, Jeremy Silman's books are, are really good. These books here, again, these aren't math books. These are just some classic books that I think are very pleasing to look at and uh, nice to have around. So I've got uh, some Jane Austen, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, of course, Sherlock Holmes, Jules Verne, and the Count of Monte Cristo book here. And I think uh, they're not math books, but, but they're nice books. Uh, and down here, actually, some actual textbooks here. Uh, this is my differential equations book. And uh, this is the book I used as an undergraduate when I took differential equations. It doesn't have partial differential equations in it, but it's a good book. Here I have a, an algebra book, intermediate algebra, just, just for my reference. I like to have a pre-calc book or two in here, an algebra book or two. Here's a bigger pre-calculus book that I have. Nothing, nothing crazy, nothing special, but again, I like to have a couple textbooks around. This book is an introductory to statistics book that I have, and this is the book I used when I took my first stat class as an undergraduate. And uh, it's nice, it's readable. Uh, it's, a little, it's a little dense, but you know, it's good if you wanna learn statistics for the first time. And then last, but definitely not least, this is my introductory to complex analysis book um, by Zill. And uh, this book I absolutely love. This is probably one of my favorite books, math books I've ever, uh, I've ever purchased because it's so darn readable. It reads just like a calc textbook. You can really teach yourself complex analysis with this book. And this is the book I used in my grad class. Um, I have nothing bad to say about this book. It has applications of complex analysis, complex variables, which is really cool because people don't think of imaginary numbers having many applications, but but they do, and uh, I'd love to read probably this book. I'd read, read it again, it was so good, or go through it again, because it has so many beautiful mathematics to it. You know, complex analysis is one of the most beautiful subjects in all mathematics, arguably. So there you go. Um, thanks for watching. This was just my quick tour of my uh, portable, as I call it, math library. Again, if you're interested in checking out these books, I'll see if I can put some links in the description. And uh, if you like this video, if you want to see more videos about math books and math book reviews, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.